everyone, welcome back to my vlog. This is Susie from Thread Quarters. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I am going to be chatting about my coat making plans and um, tailoring journey that I want to go on. Um, so if you're interested in hearing about that or you want to just chat about tailoring, then keep watching. I've been thinking for a while now that I have not really made a coat. I have made one coat, here's a picture here of it, and actually I've got the, the pattern here, it's a Vogue 9037, um, a wrap coat, and there's absolutely no tailoring in this whatsoever, so to me I don't really feel like I've made a coat. I mean I, I technically have, but it was super super easy. The perfect um, starting point for if you've never made a coat actually, so that's a, a suggestion for you if you like that style. Um, it really is flattering on me, I have plans to make another one, but I want to go on a bit of a tailoring journey because as I say I have not really tried any of those things before um, and by tailoring I'm talking about proper um, internal inter um, interfacing that a coat will need, maybe welt pockets, bound buttonholes, um, proper um, tailoring around a collar, how to do a notch collar, how to get a nice rolled um, collar stand, you see I don't even know the terminology, um, and just how to sew a coat as beautifully as possible. I don't want to rush into it and do it half-heartedly, I want to learn how to do it properly. So my first step to, into that journey has to be has been to try and source information and my first go-to are books. Now I have two in my, I had two in my stash already, stash of books, I don't know, and they are excellent books. If you don't have these books I would really highly recommend both of them. And it is the Vogue Sewing book and the um, Claire Schiffer, Schaefer um, Couture Sewing Techniques. Um, <clears throat> this is a great just general how-to. Now I will say it's mainly text. There's no photographs, so if you prefer to um, see things done via photographs, this isn't the book for you. But I would urge you to try it anyway because it's just diagrams, but it just tells you how to do things properly and I have found it really interesting. It's the kind of book that you could just read in bed <laughs> one night if you're wanting to learn something new. It does, it teaches you everything and it's brilliant. So there are aspects in this for tailoring but not enough, I felt. Um, it does, it just didn't go into enough detail for me. And like I say, there's no photographs, so I do, I do personally like to see things either in a video or um, photographically. Photographically, is that right? And then this one, again, couture techniques. So this is how to just do things properly. Um, you don't have to do things the way that, that they're done in this book. I bought this when I um, was making my wedding reception dress and I used a lot of techniques from this book in that dress. And it's actually just really interesting to see how to do different things properly, if you want to say, the couture way, let's say then, not necessarily properly, is it? Um, there's nothing wrong with doing things um, in the quicker method, you know, if it's still creating a beautiful garment then, then it's fine. So it's just personal preference, isn't it? So there are um, things in this book, there you go, there's the jackets and coats section. So it does cover things um, that you would need to know to um, start making a coat or jacket. Uh, again, there's not a load of photographs and I just wanted as much information as possible. So I went online to see what else I could find and um, I got these three books here. 
that um, they're all second hand. I bought them on Amazon and they didn't cost very much money and I thought oh, I'll just I'll get them and I'll see what they're like. So um, I'm going to start with these two here. This one here. Singer tailoring. I thought yeah that sounds perfect and it's pretty good. It's all photographs which is good. I mean it's an old book so you know the photos are very 80s but the principles are still the same so it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, and there's pad stitching, there's um, horse hair interfacing, hair canvas, um, again there's your pad stitching, tailoring techniques, this is preparing the pattern, you know it goes into, I'm obviously flicking through this backwards so in terms of the way they approach things, getting a good fit even, tools that you might need, which is another thing I'm going to chat about, um, yeah so I thought that is actually that's a good book if anyone is interested in tailoring. And then I, I also on Amazon, as I say, you can't really flick through it very well on Amazon. I picked up this one, the classic guide to sewing the perfect jacket, tailoring. Exactly what I need. Um, I don't know if you can tell from this um, flick through. It's exactly the same book as this one. totally different and there was nothing on the website to indicate that they were the same book but with a different cover. They've even got a different name. I mean they both say tailoring on them but this is the classic guide to sewing the perfect jacket as like a subtitle and this is just called Singer Sewing Reference Library. Anyway I'm probably going to do some little giveaway at some point and I have a, a, a nice tailoring book to give away in my giveaway. I don't know when I'm going to do it sometime. Look forward to that guys if you are keen on getting this book. So I've got two of those and then I also picked up this one is um, Jackets, Coats and Suits from Threads magazine. So it's actually um, just a collection of articles from past Thread magazines. Again it's a very old book so there is like serious 80s style going on. Look at that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be making that jacket, it's it's not not really me, I don't know if I'd suit that hat, what do you think guys? No, come on, I, I, I'm only joking, Obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be someone's <laughs> taste even nowadays, so that's fine. But there are interesting um, articles in here, um, but what I would say it's not as useful as that other tailoring book. But there are still um, definitely things to learn from um, from this um, book. So, you know, as I said, it didn't cost very much money, so that's fine. So, I've started reading those. I have a lot more reading to do. Um, I have to say, I've sort of put it on the back burner recently, so I want to pick it up again and really get my head around all the different concepts of tailoring, and I'm excited to start trying them. So now, what... Um, coats am I going to make? Um, so I have a little, um, a small pile, a small pile of fabric. <laughs> I don't, don't ask me why, but you know, once I get an idea in my head, I kind of go full in. I go, I go all in. And I know this completely contradicts with the last video I just put up, but, um, I have every intention of making every single one of these fabrics. So you guys hold me accountable, please. So I'm just going li to lift them up. Oh, you would have seen this in the thumbnail for this video anyway. But yeah, so I've got four, there are only four fabrics here, but because they're coat, it's coating, takes up loads, they're just massive. Um, and I'm going to talk you through them in the order that I'm probably going to make them in. And it's going to go from easiest to hardest in terms of techniques. Um, they are all from Fabworks, so if they still have these fabrics in stock, I will link them below. Fabworks is actually a great place for getting coating at a reasonable price and wool coating at that. This is a wool blend, this one here, but the exciting thing about this is it's double-sided. So it's black on one side and blue on the other. Now I'm going to say one thing. The photography on their website fooled me a little bit and the blue in real life is not as vibrant cobalt as I thought it was going to be. So I was slightly disappointed in the blue here. 
I don't know what it's going to look like on, on the video, but in real life it's not quite as punchy <laughs> in your face. It's a little bit softer and it might suit someone to be that way more, whatever. But um, the fact that it's double-sided, I thought this is going to be perfect for an unlined, um, where did I go? An unlined jacket, coat, um, and I knew exactly which one. So yes, like I said, I wanted to make V9, um, 9037, as I said guys, or I said in my previous video, and I'm recording these at the same day, um, I'm getting over a cold at the moment, so I'm a bit breathy, so I really apologise for that. I'm coughing and sneezing and sniffing a bit. I'm going to try and edit that out as much as possible. Um, but if I have missed one, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. So yes, I did say I was going to make this again. Um, there's an image of it there, and what I would like to do... This is unlined, but the amazing thing about this is that it doesn't fray when it's cut, so you could actually leave your edges raw um, on this jacket. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do that or not. I think I might. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like. I'll, I'll do a little test. But I think I'm going to have the blue on the outside. Well, I keep changing my mind. But I think I'm going to have the blue on the outside and just have the black. No. I think I was going to have the blue on the outside when I thought it was a really bright cobalt colour and just have the black on the inside but when it arrived and I was disappointed in the shade of blue I decided well do you know what I really need a black coat so let's just make a black coat and then it's got this fun blue on the inside so I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So um, that pattern comes together really quickly. I was able to whip up that last, the first version of that coat um, really quite quickly, even with crazy pattern matching. So this one's not going to have any pattern matching at all required. So um, hopefully I should be able to do that quite quickly. Yay. Not really any tailoring required for that one, interfacing the collar. That's it. So that's not really huge step towards my ta in, into my tailoring journey. <laughs> the next pattern I plan on making is the paper cut Sapporo coat and I have seen so many beautiful versions of this online I just couldn't resist but I have also seen a lot of bad versions. Controversial to say obviously but yeah this can go either really well or really badly. So I'm, I'm nervous about that and I bought this beautiful, this is one of my favourite fabrics that I picked up. Again they're all from Fabworks like I said and this is the most perfect shade of red for me. It's a mohair and um, so it's very fluffy um, and it's really soft and snuggly and um, a decent thickness actually. I mean you can see that. Sort of the light shines through it a little bit but not a lot. Yeah and I'm nervous about like branching into mohair straight away because I know mohair can be a little bit tricky to work with. Does need special consideration in terms of interfacing and ironing and everything like that and I was rather nervous about it but I just loved the, sh the fabric so much that I just went ahead and got it um, and in my s online search I have found a blog post of someone that has made the Sapporo coat out of mohair, not red, blue, um, and she has broken it down, I'll put the link down below um, to it if anyone else is interested, she has broken it down into exactly what she did, she's even lengthened the sleeves, which I want to do as well because I want to wear it in winter, she lives in Scotland and she was saying the same thing, what's the point of having a coat without having long sleeves in Scotland, it's cold and windy and wet. Mm, this sounds like Northern Ireland. <laughs> she also has put poppers down the front of hers. This coat doesn't actually close at the front and she has made hers close. So that was very interesting. Haven't decided yet whether I want to do that or not with mine. Um, but it was very interesting the way she did it. <clears throat> Getting out of breath, talking too fast. But yeah, there's going to be this. I think there's not a lot of tailoring. Um, interfacing methods in the actual um, instructions for this 
but that blog post does show you extra things to do that she has done and I am going to do as well. And I found a couple of other um, Sapporo posts, again, talking through a bit more, you know, like with a backstay and different types of interfacing to use for different areas. So I'm gonna do that. This is lined. So um, again, I'm going to line this coat maybe with quite a special fabric, but I'm still deciding about that. It could be pretty epic. I'm, I am excited about it. We'll see. So it's um, the Cobra Corsage um, uh, Lady McElroy fabric in um, the, the crepe so that it's got that um, silkiness to it. I do have it in lawn as well because I love this fabric. Um, and I know I do feel a little bit sad that it's not going to be on the outside of something because it's beautiful. But I just think that that inside that is just gonna look amazing. Really, really, I think that's gonna just be a very special coat. And that's what I want, I want a special coat, so. And then on to what I consider to be the proper tailored coat project. And I have got this beautiful, this beautiful pink herringbone wool again is from Fabworks. It's quite a lightweight fabric actually um, compared to the other two um, but I think that means that I'm going to be able to get some lovely sharp corners and hopefully nice detailing on it. We'll see and what I would like to make out of this is perhaps the Romana coat. I know that from By Hand London I'll put the link down below. Here's a picture of it here. <laughs> um, I know there have been some good and bad reviews, I'll say. Um, so I am going to be going into this project cautiously and I will be making a toile. I will be practicing the collar, which I think is the issue a lot of people have had with it. Um, and I will, but I just, the finished products of the Romana, I think are so classic and so perfect. I don't have a lining for this yet, but again, I want it to be really special. Um, and I just really, I really am struggling with what, what would you line that with? And I would quite like it to be a design. I don't mind spending a bit of money on it either. Um, the sleeves don't have to be in the expensive lining, so to speak. They can just be normal, um, plain colored slinky fabric but yeah excited about that one and then my final um fabric that i have i don't have a pattern for i know that's not a good idea but i just loved it so much i really hope it's gonna show up in the video um sorry about the fluff it is really heavy this is proper proper heavy coating wool fabric. It is deep, 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 deep navy, like a really dark French navy with a red spotted window pane check on it. I say spotted, the line is dotted, um, which I just think is really classic as well and um, really suits my wardrobe colour scheme, so to speak. Now, what I was thinking about this is like a pea coat, maybe, or some sort of day-to-day uh, -day outdoor coat. Like the toasty um, coat from, is it called Waffle Patterns? I'm not sure, uh, I put the link down below, or that's the picture of it there. Um, or the one from Closet Case, which I can't remember the name off off the top of my head. Now a lot of I don't know if anyone has made those in wool rather than the the types of wax cotton, which is a lot thinner than this. This is really really thick fabric, so I am nervous about doing detailed anything too tricky or detailed in this because it is pretty chunky. I'm also nervous about this old machine being able to sew through the thickness of this. Um, Hmm, maybe I'll borrow my mum's sewing machine to sew this one up actually. She's got a, um, a high-end faff that works really well. Um, it's a lot more capable than this little one here. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions of um, what I should make this in, or if you have any patterns that you could suggest, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Please do let me know. Um, so far in all of this, I haven't mentioned bound buttonholes or welt pockets, and that those are two things that I really would like to try. Um, unless I could put them onto my Romana, but I don't think so. So I'm sort of on the fence now about the Romana because maybe I'm not going to cover as many tailoring techniques as I would really like to by the time I get through all these fabrics, which I feel is a shame. So perhaps a different classic coat for the pink might be better. Uh, as I say, I am leaning towards like a... I just, I actually can't find a decent pea coat pattern. I did find one from Style Arc have one, but there's very little review on it on the internet, which makes me nervous. I really would like to see it made up by lots of different people to 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 decide whether it's it's worth it, worth the risk or not, if you know what I mean. So like I say, if you can think of any patterns, uh, suggestions for this fabric, I would love to hear them. So, and then I did say I was going to touch really quickly on tools. I don't have any tools yet, <laughs> so that's really brief. But I want to buy a clapper, 100% need to buy one of those. I did try and pick one up in the Black Friday sale, but I couldn't find anyone that was selling one in the sale, which was a shame. So, oh well, I'll just have to buy one full price. They're not particularly expensive anyway. Um, I would say I would get my husband to make me one, but it, it, there's a long list of things that I want him to get on with, so that would be well down the list. <laughs> Might never happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, what other tools do you think I need to start my tailoring journey? Um, also, do you have any tips on working with wool fabrics? Um, how am I going to pre-treat these fabrics? These are just fresh from the shop, have not touched them. I, I don't want to... I'm nervous about putting them in the tumble dryer. My tumble dryer is not very big. It might struggle. Plus, I don't really want them battered about like that. So should, should I um, steam them on the ironing board to try and pre-shrink it? Um, I also have a stand-up steamer. Would that maybe work? Although I don't know. I could hang, it up, hang the fabric up somewhere and steam it. I don't know. Please, please tell me because this is a whole new journey that I know nothing about and I am all ears and I want to learn as much as possible and I know there's so many people that watch my videos who are very experienced um, seamstresses and thank you for watching my videos. I, I really, I'm sometimes amazed that you bother listening to me when I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yes, so you will perhaps know a lot more about sewing with uh, wool coating than I would so I would love to hear every tip and trick and technique you have to share with me in the comments below and we can get the chat going that would be really great and I'm excited to start learning and started going on this journey. Now I won't have anything made before the end of this year. <laughs> it's too much going on. It's December, uh, Christmas is coming. Yeah, so it'll be in the new year, but it'll still be cold, so I'll still need these coats. And the plan is that these are coats I want to have with me for years and years and years to come. So there's no point in rushing them. Let's make them perfect and get as much wear and love out of them as possible. So, so yes, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, as always, please do give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Um, and hit the subscribe button if you want to... Um, keep following along with my coat journey. Hit the notification bell if you want to know. The next time that I upload a video, it, you'll get a notification. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.